every single time we see you and we hear you all the comments on our social media platform we'll be reading a few of them out but before we do that we'll be uh, introducing our guest today in the conversation room we'll start with you Chinwe. hello viewers hello viewers Kevin Kevin Fineface my name is Devan mom <laughs> Well, it's so nice to have all of you. And like I said, thank you for joining us every single time we're in the conversation room. Our social media handles have been on fire. Mm -hmm. So many comments on all the platforms. I'm just going to read a few out. Um, one of them says, conversations with your guest Zainab is very interesting and educative, especially her herbal remedies and analysis, which has been very helpful. Thumbs up. That's from Ifi. Thanks for sending in that, Ifi. Um, another person, uh, Ahmad Fati, says, yes, exactly. I love your conversation with Zainab. It seems the Zainab... Oh, yeah, it's trending. Yeah, the Zainab <laughs> episode is trending. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, another person said, very educative programs, remarkable, natural, healthy proof from Madam Zainab, which is fantastic. Um, some people have asked for Zainab's comments, and we'll be sending that to you um, through the same channel that you used to contact us. Um, Zainab also has a show on NTA. We'll be sending um, information about her show uh, also later on. Someone said, Today's talk, I guess on that day, on adolescent age was great. Nikkei, keep up the good work. Well, thank you very much, even though I'm not an adolescent, but I know quite a few people <laughs> who are there in that age group. That was from Grace. Grace, thanks for sending in that message. Um, let me see. So many. Yes, someone asked that, um, who's the real anchor of conversations? And um, would you want to take that? Hmm. I'd say we are all anchors. We're all we're, anchors. We're just, we're just trying to establish conversations and exactly. hope that you'd start your own conversation out there. Exactly. That's pretty <laughs> much it. There's no anchor. We are all anchors. That's how conversation is. Today, we're talking about how to manage relationships with our in-laws. And I guess this is where mm. Kevin comes in because, mm. you know, I know you've been married. Like, how many years have you been married, Kevin? Twelve years. Twelve. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So I guess one. you'll be taking the lead on this. <laughs> uh. How do you manage, you know, relating with your wife's in-laws? Has it been an easy journey or n not so easy? A bit well, bumpy. Well, um, looking at the ladies sitting around here, sometimes mm -hmm. I felt like I'm a bit intimidated, but... <laughs> You are, I'm blessed amongst women. Yes, you yes. are. We can, <laughs> we can be your eye candy, not to worry. I, I, I grew up in the midst of women. I had um, about six women ahead of me. Uh, wow. Yeah, and uh, being the only brother of my mother. and So kind of a bit spoiled, but not spoiled. <laughs> so, uh, um, In-laws. I, I wonder why it's difficult to manage in-laws. Before I got married, I made up my mind to make my in-laws my family. I found out that the society we live in hadn't actually educated us in the manner that we should be educated to understand that this other person on the hive is also part of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because the joy that comes with the peace of mind your spouse will have comes from the knowing that because you, you've taken this person away from where they used to, the family they used to, yes. from the knowing that that hand of fellowship will still be extended. Once you're able to understand this principle and make effort to meet them where they are, you won't have any problem. They pray for your success. But right. once you don't do that, they look forward to seeing their daughter or their son to come back home so they can get the best of the time they should have with the person. Mm. So for me, uh, it's coming to, the, you know, coming to terms with this reality and say, look, hey, these people are my people. Mm. And what I do for my mom or my dad is what I do for my father-in-law and my mother. Yeah, because um, if I'm not sincere to that extent, it means uh, there's a way they will get to find out that the love I'm giving to them is tainted. And mm -hmm. once people sense that what you're doing is not genuine, they intend to begin to, you know, fight it. Okay, let me, yeah. let me just come in here. Um, can you really, the way I would treat my mom, can, can it really be equated to the way I would treat my mother-in-law? Can it really be equal? I don't know, Devan, it, it, it's not very equal, I, I have to admit. It. My mother carried me for nine months. I don't well, think. Uh, it's like <laughs> this. Before I, uh, for one thing, I, by the time I was 28, I was an orphan. 
Oh. My parents both, my mother died when I was 20 and then my father eight years later. Oh, sorry to hear and that. And from so all sorry, the uh, horror stories you keep hearing about in-laws, particularly mothers-in-law, hmm. I always hoped and wished I would marry an orphan. <laughs> right. Yeah, I heard men say, oh, that is evil. No, 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 I'm not saying I want to take a guy who has parents and then his, his parents should die. <laughs> no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. Right off the bat, I wanted to date and marry orphans like myself. Okay. So I wouldn't feel disadvantaged. Now, of course, when people hear you say that, it sounds like you, ah, this one is an orphan, so she wants every other person's parents to, to die. No, that, for me, that wasn't it. I low-key started keeping my eyes out for people whose parents were already dead. Really? So that I wouldn't <laughs> have to contend with the mother-in-law thing hmm. when I don't have a mother myself to run back to for help, consolation, advice, and things like yeah. that. Okay. And I come from a very small family unit, and my brothers grew up separate. We didn't grow up together, so okay. I felt very alone, and I didn't want to marry a man who would have that whole family thing going on and then I would feel ganged up against. Mm. And that was exactly what happened. Now, let me express it. I don't feel ganged up against, but my husband's parents are both alive. Okay. His mother is, is, is alive, his father is alive. He has five siblings. So they have the whole family um, set up going oh, on. Oh, yeah, they do. And, you know, we dated for like three years before we eventually got married. It had always been my policy that, okay, if I don't get an orphan, at least, let me marry into a family that accept me and welcome me right. completely, mm -hmm. warts and all. And I'd always made up my mind that whatever the parents' outlook is, I don't really have a challenge. The dads are not really an issue. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if I'm dating somebody, he introduces me to the parents, and the mother is cold, mm -hmm. distant, shows that she doesn't like me right from day one, I'll really start evaluating that relationship. Really, and that was my, you know, that was my mindset. Yes. Yeah. And the, the good thing was the very first day he introduced me to his mom, she was this warm, mm -hmm. wonderful, lively, very funny person. She, you know, she has this quirky sense of humor, so we really get along. She'll be telling you the most deep, dark, terrible thing that has happened to somebody, but the way she'll express it will be so funny. You, you know, I just start laughing. Sometimes <laughs> I laugh until I cry. But, you know, she doesn't get upset because she knows I'm not laughing at her. I'm laughing at the way she has expressed it. So right. we're actually a house on fire. We, we get along very well. Okay. And my, my, my husband's father is like, in, in, in civ culture, he's... He's my husband. Yes, my, same with yeah. yeah my same with my me, actual my husband is just yes. the yes. It's just the baby maker. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. and so I get along really well with both of them. I have okay. a wonderful relationship with my father-in-law. Wonderful relationship with my mother-in-law. We get along very, very well. Okay. So. Have you ever had to? Have they? Has there ever been a reason for them to live with you? No. No. They they do visit. Okay. They okay. visit us stay about a week, a couple of weeks, and all that, but not like living with us. And we visit too. Okay. Yeah. You know, you know sorry, I... Devan. Sorry. Um, there's, there's something you said, and it, it got me thinking. Yeah. Which is that oftentimes we have these stereotypes that we live life with or we grew up with. You had said until you get to meet someone who is an orphan. If you hadn't given room for, <laughs> you know, this beauty to come into your life, you wouldn't have actually received it. True. So we don't need to use circumstances, situations, or experiences to get mm. into where we're going to. Mm. It was a very flawed way of thinking yeah. because now I have a mother. Yeah. You see? Now you do. Exactly. So now you exactly. Do. Individuals need to open up themselves. Yeah. And now I find out that most times what has happened to us, you know, getting into marriage is that we come with that bias. Mm -hmm. Maybe from experience, probably you, you have a dysfunctional home mm -hmm. and you come with that bias that uh, you see traits of it and you begin to fight it. Right. Rather than having the expectation that yours will be far better and walk towards seeing that it's better instead of, you know, trying to fight and killing this whole thing. So, you know, true. Now, that, now that you mentioned biases, you know, I had uh, a friend of mine when we were much younger. Uh, she was always terrified about stories that she had heard about mother-in-laws, you know, so she, was, she said to herself that, in fact, she doesn't want to get married to someone that has a mother. A mother, wow. You know, with the mother alive, you know. So, but as, as God would have it, she got married to um, a guy that had a mother, of course, and they have 
a beautiful relationship, relationship together. Yeah. So I think, you know, you know like you said, we shouldn't... These yeah. perpetuated by the movie industry. Really, you think so? <laughs> you think no, so? seriously. I, I mean it. I'm not saying that to every, every relationship, mm. is, is, it's not, it, it's every stepmother is bad. Yeah, right. but isn't the movie industry, isn't what happens um, in, in the, the movie, it's a reflection it's of what of, happens of the society. Of the society. Yeah, but how, see. how many movies do you see that show a good stepmother Step -mother. or a good mother-in-law? <laughs> True. You know what, True. let's just hold that thought. Them. Let's hold that thought. We'll be listening to people's opinions on whether or not they can live with their in-laws. Lots of people have different opinions on that topic. This is Conversations here on NCA. We'll be right back after this. I don't see it as a way for somebody who decides to stay with his family, to stay by the in-law. It uh, will cause some complication, at least a major complication in, the mar in a marriage. You cannot stand as a man to decide for your family. You still live by the advice of the parents who gives you their wife and it will later affect the growth of your family, the, grow, the growth of your family. And in another way around, there, are, there will be some complications in the advice given to the wife from the parents. Maybe people from the wife's side will, favor, will mostly favor it. And the advice that will come with anything that will mostly favor from the wife's side Ah, my in-laws uh, is such an impossibility to me. Um, perhaps based on my tradition, based on where I come from, I, I can't. It's such an impossibility. Uh, these are people that I ought to accord to the highest respect. Like, I should respect them uh, maybe to an extent greater than I do for my own parents because I must have lived with my parents, I'm living with them, and, I'm, and I've been very much free with them. So for my in-laws, I can't even expect myself uh, spending even a week in their house uh, and, and up to talk more of spending, living a whole life with them. No, I can't. Well, it depends. As long as they don't give me problem, it's no problem. I can live with them. I can cope with them. If, as long as they don't make life miserable for me, there's no problem. Now you can relate with them. If they, are, if they don't post any problem to my marriage. I would not like to live with my in-law after marriage. Yes, and uh, I have some of my reasons behind it. The total respect may not be there because you are living with them. There are some things that they may do that will not warrant you to tolerate because they gave you their daughter to marry. So if really you need that total respect, you need to distance yourself from them. Yeah, I possible. I can live with my illo after marriage. And the reason is that we define marriage as a union between uh, the man and the woman. If you get married to your wife, the relations of the wife becomes your relations. And the, the, the problem of the, of the wife become your problems and so I can stay with them without a problem. Live with my in-law after marriage. Wow, this is interesting. Um, for the African setting, before the civil war, that might be because the setting required is, is some sort of traditional setting where you have father, mother, cousins, everybody within the same community. But in a modern state like we are now, I honestly is not visible. It's not acceptable and I'm not sure it's attainable. My reasons are this. One, as a man, you are expected to show forth the credibility status of being a man to be responsible for yourself, your wife, 
and by extension your wife's brothers sisters uncles or whatever but at the time you decide to stay back even if they provide for you honestly you lose the value of being the head of the home I assure you within the trend of two months there are unbearable circumstances that will come your way and if you are this humble docile meek type you keep stomaching Nick and acting as a slave in the house but the real position of a man is that when you get married take your wife to your house even if it is one small room somewhere even if she's wealthy her in-laws are your in-laws are wealthy credibility for the state of your marriage requires that you begin small somewhere yes of course they will help me now eh? for example my mother-in-law in fact i was my mother-in-law was so close to me even my more than my mother when i got married so why wouldn't i live with my in-laws and my father-in-law loved me too. They are dear like my brothers and sisters. So what I will gain from my brothers and sisters, I'm getting it from them. It's not advisable for you to live with your in-law after the marriage. So you, as a, 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 a husband, you have prepared a place which you are going to put the married wife into, which two of you will now live as a happy family. So you staying in your family house, doesn't, I mean the in-law's house, doesn't make any sense. It's a kind of disrespect. And it's low the dignity of, uh, of the man. That is, you are not capable of your responsibility. That's it. We've heard from the people whether or not you can live with your in-laws. For me, I think it's a bit of 50-50. Some days, yes, and some days, no. <laughs> Chiwe, I know you still have some feedback from right. our social media that oh, you yes. want to read out to yes, us. Yes, we do. And this is from our Twitter handle. And uh, at Gilly, still single, but I must confess, I was not just educated yesterday, but also blessed. I, get, I got so many answers to my questions. Kudos. Thank you, Gilly. Uh, at that Lawal was indeed captivating with germane topics of single parenting and cost cutting. Thumbs up. Uh, at Alutadaf, Chinwen, Nike, Rikiba, and Zainab Sharif. Interesting topic. Great presentation. Like Zainab advised, at Conversation is a program to watch. <laughs> That's nice. You bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> at Alutadaf, again, uh, faith in God is the biggest remedy for grief. The acknowledgeable woman on conversations, care for the elderly. At Om, Om Mike for real, enjoying the conversations. Thank you very much, everyone. So this is uh, from our email feedback as well. Um, and that's from Kayode, Ayodele. He says, hello, thanks for the, for the encouragement. More grace, please, can I get Z email? Well, we'll link you up with Z if you send us your number. So please send us your number, we'll link you up. Thank you. Okay, so like uh, Devan said just before the break that she feels the movie industry has, I don't know, villainized mm -hmm. this mother-in-law role so much so that people are now scared, you know, you're scared of having the mother-in-law come into your house or taking your husband and his attention away from you as a married woman. Yeah. Uh, it's not, and you, you also made the point that, uh, but doesn't the movie industry build on what is already in society, you know, in what society. Is going on? Yeah. it is true. But you know, it's just like working in the news. Good things happen, but it's the right. bad stuff that gets hyped up. Well, right. Okay. Yeah. So that's true. I have heard real life stories of the mother-in-law straight from hell. <laughs> they exist. It's not a myth. They're out there. Right. But how come y you you rarely ever get to see that saintly mother-in-law? That mother-in-law who is actually the one berating her son mm -hmm. on your behalf. Right. Well, you, you don't get, and they mm -hmm. exist too. They do it's exist. It's like this myth of every Nigerian man 
keeping a, a bevy of uh, mistresses. It's not true. <laughs> well, <laughs> many true. do, but there are also lots Some of do. married men who truly oh. cherish their, their marriages and, and yeah, don't, are dedicated don't to jump their wives. around the place. Yeah. But you hardly hear that story. It's this constant. Uh, narrative of the Nigerian man who cannot stay in one place <laughs> that just gets played and then the stepmother who is so bad and evil and yes they all exist but there's also the other side of the story mm. there are good mothers-in-law there are bad mothers-in-law right. and there are people and then of course again before I got married there was a point when I genuinely didn't want to get married I had heard that everybody who is married doesn't want to be married anymore. They want to leave. It's hell. It's this. They're just gritting their so teeth. So many horrible their stories out there. And I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. Is that bad? Why do you want to be part of this shit? You know, excuse my French. But I've come to realize now that I'm married that there are good days, yes, there are bad days, and there are exact, in between days. Exactly. And if you have good and in between, that's already 70%. Right. Days. So I don't want to do 30% that isn't working. It's right. like any other relationship. Yes, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. true. So if you. I think it's about mutual respect. Right. You know, if you marry into a home where they didn't already have issues with him marrying you, you already have a good base from which to start. Mm -hmm. That's my mm -hmm. True. But if there's already, ah, ah, Ishibo, ah, mm. this one is house out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, as mm -hmm. mundane as that sounds, as that it sounds. can be a real issue. Yeah, That's true. true. For it's you. true. Very true. You know what, as you were speaking, Devan, something came to mind. Um, in my own culture and tribe, well, we say, which means there is no small in-law and there's no big, big in-law. In -law. They're all your in-laws. In -laws. They're all your husband, in, in quote. So um, there are situations where, uh, let me just use an example. Let's say my husband's sister is much younger than me, but I am expected to call her auntie yeah. or sister. You know, so, the, you know, for some people, they're like, oh, no, I can't. I, mm -hmm. I have friends that are like, well, you know, even if she's my my in-law and she's my sister-in-law i still call her by, by name but you know these are the small small issues that affect relationships, relationships. because you know uh your mother-in-law is expecting you to call her daughter auntie even and you're though, like 10 years older yeah, you're than 10 her. years older than her i mean why should i call her auntie so when i'm clearly thing. clearly older than her because it's cultural you can't really is you it? know like escape it completely you know so it becomes an issue well um, listening to you, ladies, sometimes I get carried away with the stories <laughs> you're giving, your conversations are like so ripe and all of that. Um, I think the society has a role to play. What I mean the society, horse, families. What are the, um, the lessons, the, the skills we're giving to our children as they grow up? Because they're going to be um, husbands and wives to other persons that become, uh, they have in-laws. How prepared are they to get into receive the in-laws? As much as we have had the experience, we get into um, life with the bias from the experience of yesterday without yeah. expecting that life could be better. I mean, there's, I always believe that there are good things that can happen. Hmm. Have, you you ever, have you ever had your in-law live with you? Let me, just, yes. let me, let me clarify that. Yes, your, your mother or your father-in-law? My mother-in-law you know, lived with us uh, for a few periods. Now, here's the thing. How, how, how brief was this period? Uh, I think for some months. And okay. I never had any issues to quarrel or anything. Hmm. No. It's just that sometimes the lack of understanding from my wife, you know, uh, sometimes creates that conflict. Okay. Uh, I, I, made, I made mention earlier that what I do for my mom and my father is what I do for them uh, when it comes to um, financial support. If I'm sending money home, I don't get to do this lopsided thing. Mm -hmm. Of course, family is family. I know I have siblings who also take care of my parents. You okay. know, uh, they do that. And if I get home, I need to do what I need to do with them. Okay. I sit down with my father-in-law and we play and we laugh and do things together. It is difficult for some to see that this is real because of the societal bias that we have. Because you are expected. Uh, I, I give an instance. I tried to play with my mother-in-law at a certain time. It was viewed differently because Someone felt that I shouldn't be playing the way I was playing. Hang on, let me hmm. just ask this question. Are you from the same <laughs> that ethnic That was my group? question. Are you from the same uh, uh, tribe? I, no, I'm Calabari. They are um, Izon, uh, which were like a jaw tribe. Mm. Yeah, from the of, same state? Different state, Bayasa River State. Oh, okay. okay. And so it looks like, oh, okay. So it seemed like you were being rude. Yeah, it seems like, no, someone said, it looks like you're supposed to relate to this person with this kind of... Uh, Awesomeness yes. yeah. no, okay. if I if I can sit and laugh with my mom, why can't I laugh with my mother in law? Right. You see, these are the issues. You know, yeah. you know, so sometimes the understanding of the individual matters a lot. That's why I said the society needs to begin to re educate 
itself on how to manage this thing because I'm telling my daughter right now that you need to learn to understand the way you are and relate with every individual as a God factor here on earth. Mm -hmm. Because if we, if we relate without benevolence, we will have problems. Mm. I, I currently, you know, relate to people from a pitiable disposition. Uh, so before mm. you begin to get me offended, I look at the shit, yeah. I feel sorry you for need, you. I feel sorry for you, <laughs> sort of. You know, and it helps. Even with, even with my home, it helps with my relate with my wife now. Proud to this time, it wasn't there because I wanted to assert my position because society taught me so to, to assert my position. You're the man. That As you're the, the man, man of the house. But currently, I'm, I'm more like the woman rapper. It's better for me, <laughs> you know, to act like one, like the woman rapper. You know, uh, they say, if I have committee of friends, I would say you have to join the association of woman rappers, you know. <laughs> and that's because we have come to realize that there's no need fighting to destroy that which you're supposed to build. Mm. There are obnoxious in-laws like that. They want to throw their weight around, especially if the man has money. You know, yeah. Ah, it's my brother's money. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you are seeing like uh, some kind of collateral damage kind of person yes. mm -hmm. who is just uh, coming yeah. to reduce the commonwealth. Like you're <laughs> adding no value to the whole picture. So there's all this business. Ah, especially the sisters. I don't have sisters-in-law. Hmm. And my brothers, <laughs> you, look, you look like you're happy about my that. My brothers, you know, okay. okay, you know. But I have seen all these scenarios where, you know, the, the whole chest popping thing is happening because see, my brother is the federal commissioner of God knows what, right. and they, it's up to that spouse to put their siblings in or check, whatever it is check. in check. Mm. There's a reason you married. I couldn't select you to be my brother or sister. It just happened. Mm. I selected this person to be my life partner. Hmm. So there's a difference in that relationship. You are blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No matter how much I hate you, you're my blood. Mm. But I selected this person to be part of my family. family. She is now, he or she is now one of us. And I'm not going to stand for you disrespecting them just because you feel like there's blood. Mm -mm. By virtue of that marriage, she is now a member of, of this family. family. Regardless whether we're sharing the same DNA. But Devan, how many men are doing that? But how many men I think that's are standing whether, whether out? Whether I mean, men or women. There are women watching conversations right now. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I just wish someone could tell, tell my, husband my husband this. I just wish my husband was watching conversations right now. You know, because they, these are real issues and it's happening to many people, many families, mm -hmm. you know. They have in-laws coming and barging and just literally taking over. And I mean, uh, sometimes in uh, the worst situation, when the man dies, you, we all know oh, yes. how these stories yeah. go. Yeah. We all know how these stories go. The in-laws even become worse. These said in-laws that were bad before they turn to worse. You I, know, think, so I think I have a problem with, you know, the third party, you know, relations where you have the brothers, the sisters, even the, the parents-in-law, you know, coming in and dictating how, you know, that family should, should be, be run, how it should, should be, be run, mm -hmm. you know, and that, I, I think that's what causes a lot of friction and miscommunication and hatred. You just said, because, I mean, mar what is marriage really? How should it be run? It's between man and wife. So I don't believe that anybody from outside should come and have a say, whether you're related to the person or not, whether you're a best friend or not, you know. And, you know, and I think another thing that I realized, and mm, another thing I realized is, Sometimes the men don't really stand up and say, no, this is how it should be. That's true. And then other times the men say, okay, maybe between husband and wife, uh, let's say father-in-law and mother-in-law, they talk, uh, maybe they're gisting or maybe gossiping maybe about their daughter or their son and the family. And then the man says this. Most times it's the men that push, I believe, that push the women to go and say, this is our stand or, you know, and then the man is in the back seat. Looking like the good Looking boy. like the good person. Okay. And then that's why, I, I feel that's why most women are seen as, you know. Villains. Exactly. They are, they are seen as the, the terrible so mother-in-law because she's the one out there. Meanwhile, the man has been, you know, from behind <laughs> telling you. you pushing you her ahead. Pushing her, yeah, yeah. Go it's and do possible. this. Yeah, you know? I'm, 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 uh, um, I'm concerned about things like finances. You know, sometimes uh, uh, your parents-in-law might not be as affluent as your own parents. So when you were talking about finances mm -hmm. and you've been married, I think, longer than 12 years, most 12, 12 years mm -hmm. do you, when you send money, do you send the exact amount of money to your parents and your parents-in-law? Yes. Does that work? Yeah, that's what I do. And, that's and the needs be, different. Actually. 
Uh, no, there, there's, uh, once it is deliberate to send the money, it's always on the flat rates. <laughs> Except, of course, there's a special need. Especially, of course, there's a special need. Yes. You know, uh, like my mother is on drugs currently, so from time to time I send the money, you know, for that purpose. Well, you now, have five other siblings that are also sending money. Yeah, there are other five other siblings that send money, but because you always want to have that relationship to prove. See, my father taught me something. Hmm. My late dad has a lot of money, he doesn't need anybody's money. Okay, but whatever you send to him becomes valuable to show the respect and value that you have, the thought that you have towards him. Right. So he receives and blesses you for it. Right. Okay. Now for those who don't have an understanding, say he has enough, he doesn't need it, miss out from the blessing that comes with the father's blessing. That's okay. right. Okay. So we need to understand this. Yes, I do a flat thing, but I also don't also forget the fact that this is my mother mm -hmm. who has gone through this process. Mm -hmm. Why on earth should I abandon a mother that's not only nine months, but ensure that I am where I am today? Today, yeah. I shouldn't do that. In fact, it is in, in, in the best wisdom for my wife to understand that this is the woman that has a better part of me before she came into the picture to extend the love, ensuring that I do what I'm supposed to do for her. The reciprocity comes in when mm -hmm. I see her doing that. Right. Now, sometimes when she doesn't do that, as human, I intend to also not want to do the same thing, because I get reaction. Huh? Oh, you're not. You've not called my mom, so it means I'm, I'm not going to call your mom. Mm. Things like that happens. <laughs> right. But I also need to tell myself I can't allow some other person else to deform me. Mm -hmm. I should be the be the person I'm supposed the to be person. and do what I'm supposed to do that I have the privilege to do. Society often has actually taught us something different. And so the recruitment process, for all of these we are saying now, there's what I call the recruitment process. Okay. How did the conversation begin before the relationship started? Were there introductions? Were there uh, a point made? When a guy gets to marry into a family that is far less than him financially, there's always that thinking that the woman is coming to take over from all of that. Yes. And she, because there's that thinking, also comes prepared to prove that she has married this guy and it's for me, nobody should come around this place. Which is wrong. Yeah. We should create room mm -hmm. to allow for extensions to take place. Reach out to your people out there, extend that arm of fellowship, empower somebody, do those things. If you're doing those works, and if the man gives the woman the grace to help the family, they will embrace her right. so well. But what happens is that because we have, in you know, Africa, this is a chauvinistic thing, the man wants to be seen as a man yeah. in charge. So he goes ahead to do these things without the wife doing anything. Not knowing, she had encouraged him to do it. Exactly. But because he didn't, com he didn't, he didn't communicate Kids, that. Exactly. So people don't think that she's one stopping him from doing mm -hmm, those things. Mm -hmm. I've seen family members that I go to their, to their homes and the wife doesn't necessarily welcome me as much as she should have welcomed me as an in-law. Mm -hmm. She sees me as someone that, oh, this guy is coming too close to my husband and all of this. So what I do every day, I tell my brother, look, hey, this is your family. You can't use me to score points. Okay. Right. So I go there, I show her the respect I need to show to her, and I walk away yeah, without off. showing anything that I'm, I'm not happy with the way I'm treated. Mm -hmm. I just know how to manage that so that they can be happy with their relationship. Mm -hmm. So we need to begin to see how we can blend these things and you know, get the best of uh, life. For, for, let, let me ask us this. <laughs> what, what, what are we living on earth for? Oh. We, this life is too short to I'm die young. You. See, today I lost a friend, and, and oh, I'm so, oh, so wow. pain. Sorry. Sorry the wife was that. just crying so bitterly and all of that. Oh. You see, moments they've shared together would have been so lovely. I know. Right? So we can't be going with this resentment, yeah. bitterness, every, and all of every, that. Every every minute that we have together it really counts. It's precious. Yeah, it should it be, is, there it should is be precious. love. Maximizing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. There should be respect. Uh, we'll, we'll take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll be talking about the influence of third parties, third parties. in uh, marriages, in I, relationships. I have an interesting story with regard to that. Yeah, okay, so when we get back, yeah. I think that All then, right. when it comes to third party, when, it, when women begin to transfer the love they have for their husband, for their kids, okay. that's why I have a problem. You're with talking, you're talking <laughs> from the heart. These children <laughs> are not adopted, they're your DNA. However, I still don't get where that are jealousy children, comes from. children, third parties or not? We'll talk more about that when we get back. This is conversation on NTA. <laughs> When there's a child out there that's not getting the same that your own child is getting, 
the difference will tell and there will come a time in the society where that child is going to take his pound of flesh. Where you can actually, ev everything from watching a, a program with the child, you can start up the conversation from something on the TV and yeah. say, oh, you know. <laughs> for, me, for me, it's like, hurry up with this business. Mm. And the other one said, I see it's not about me, it's about the guys, it's they're not ready to marry. Yes. So if she wants to ask something, no, I know my mother very well. <laughs> In fact, the most interesting one is when I put up pictures on WhatsApp, you know, Snapchat filters and all that, she will call me, mm -hmm. remove that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, was the thing, I got tired of all that. So we're back in the conversation room and what we're talking about now is whether or not third parties have that much of an influence in marriages. Well, third parties, we're still, the, the, the jury is still out. Are mm -hmm. children third parties or not? Hmm. That's yeah. a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> children are third parties. Anybody who is not the man and, and the, the wife, wife is the third party. Yes, in my opinion, but... including the kids. Uh -uh. Of the two of you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not backing down on this. Oh, really? Uh, if I hadn't met and married your daddy, would you have happened? <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> you are third party. Right. Let's not even debate I do, down. I do hear these things, you know, uh, she has said it, the man and wife. You have said it, the man and wife. Yes. Uh, why man and wife? Why not husband and wife? Okay. Oh, okay. Husband okay. and wife. We actually we stand wife. corrected. Yeah. Yeah. We stand corrected. Yeah. You know, you know because, husband I mean, and wife. you make the man to be that single. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's no... <laughs> <laughs> there's no there's no grooming ground for men in, in this part of our world. No, there isn't. There's no, no grooming ground. No. Men just happen to know what they know by virtue of experience. Yeah. And they pay the price for it. So do women, though. Do, if, do, well, women More are often effort is put into, into grooming women. Into women. 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 You're right. You know, You're so right. we need to change that narrative. Mm -hmm. you see, that's why we're having issues in mm -hmm. the society mm -hmm. because there are, people don't understand that men also do cry. You know, you say you're a man, be a man, brace be up. Man. No. Yeah. What makes you a man is your ability to also tear. Right. You know, that's what makes you a man. Now, when you talk about mm. third parties, right, the relationship between the husband and wife is not something that should be contested by anybody or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understand this. As a, as a wife, you need to know that your husband is first a boy. Then he is a king. So you hmm. feed you feed the <laughs> boy. boy king. <laughs> so you, like you like feed that. the boy in him okay. and respect the, the king man. that he is. Yeah. I, like that. I agree with you. Yeah. Once you do that, your queenship becomes easy. Yeah. Because it then he plays like with the ring. girl and gives the queen a place in his kingdom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids, the love which you should have for both of you will be the extension that the kids will enjoy. Right. So there won't be competitive, you know, uh, competitive um, advantage you know, in trying to love one another, mm -hmm. love the kids. Because you see what they happens, see. once there's a transference of this love to the third party, the mother will corner the kids from time to time to show how much she loves them so much that the father is trying to bring discipline. And every now and then he hides his own shield of love under the guise of discipline. <laughs> so the, the mother becomes preference Third, to yeah. the father. To the father, yes. Do because you know that, that sometimes the reverse is the case, case where the mother is the person trying to instill discipline? discipline. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And daddy yeah. is trying sometimes. to be a good boy yeah. and yeah. Yes. bringing candy and sometimes, let him yeah. do everything yes. you want to do. Do you know why I feel that happens? Because the father feels, well, I'm not home long enough. So the short period I, I he doesn't want to, yeah, that they're awake, true. you know, so it, you know, time that's with true. me should be fun. So I should always be seen as the fun parent. And then the mom is now stuck being mm -hmm. the that's billionaire. True. Yeah, the billionaire. Billionaire. Mm. yeah. <laughs> that's true. Mm. And so some mother become Margaret Thatcher's, you know, yeah. and some father becomes Hitler's, mm. you know, to the kids. And so once there's any problem, once they get matured, they get then to gravitate towards the mothers, confide in the mothers mm -hmm. do everything. Mm -hmm. And the fathers are like, okay, your guys are back. How are you guys? And all of that. <laughs> We can change all of that narrative. Yeah, yeah. we can. You know, and, can. and that is that both parties need to come to that Together. consciousness yeah. that look, this love that we have between us, nothing comes in between. In between, yes. Not for the kids. If a for woman some can, women, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but for some women, that is hard. When the baby is there, the baby is crying, the baby needs me, the baby needs diaper change, the baby, the baby is it's a it's a 24 hour project. I think at that uh, well, point, I, had I think twins. it depends on the I scenario. I had twins. It was hard to 
break out, and it's so funny that we should be talking about this. When my when we got home from the hospital, what my mom told the very first thing she told me was that try and make time for your husband, his food, make it yourself. This is twins, though, in mm -hmm. the courts and everything. Try and make time for your husband, his food, you know, just making sure he's, he's dressed well, just the little things. It matters. Don't get all carried away mm -hmm. with twins. But it was hard. It's yeah, really, it's, uh, actually, it was being hard. one child I, is difficult. Yeah, uh, I think at, it, at this point, I think it also depends on the, on the circumstances, you know, being played out. For instance, you know, you have two kids. I think at that point, the man should step in understanding thank you the man should step in yes, and see how he period, can yes for that months, period no, that's, yeah. I, have a, I have a problem with some men who don't have that understanding, understanding yeah. that this woman is going through, through this phase exactly. she's lactating and so she needs some form of support exactly and it's because the men are not actually groomed for it mm -hmm. <laughs> no grooming school there's something we need to know the, the men are st one um, straight jackets unilateral roots guys mm -hmm. Once the thought comes from there, they don't care what happens in the environment want to go through it. But I believe that with conversations, right, and uh, you have this effective communication, yeah. she's able to tell him we're out of time, a state of being, mm -hmm. yes. and empathize with him. Exactly. What happens where the men tend to want to show that martial thing? Because there's no, she hasn't been able to communicate, look, this is what I'm going through. She's yes. not empathizing with his cause and yes. say, is that all you think of every now and then? <laughs> I'm, I'm busy here yeah, talking I'm about it. You know, that's what you're thinking of. Please get out of this or yeah. use some things. If it cow, see, once a man begins to get withdrawn, it becomes repulsive. Mm. So yeah. we need to treat, that's what I say, you need to treat the boy, feed that boy. You know? <laughs> but hang on, let, let, let me feed come into boy. this. You know, every time I hear men bemoan how <laughs> the woman, since she gave birth, her entire attention is on the infants and all, it, 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 it actually rubs me up the wrong way. Mm, okay. Because there's Why no so? rule on this planet that says you can't chip in mm. and help. Help. And if you're oh. helping her, she is not, I have looked after a child. Waking up three, four times at night is not fun. Mm. Barely. Infants <laughs> have this thing they do where they'll wake up five, six, seven times Sunday at night, night, then sleep soundly during yes. the daytime. <laughs> yeah, I know that. When you're running well. around cooking and sweeping and <laughs> yeah. cleaning up and everything. Yeah. And the last thing you want to do is socialize. In any form. In any form. Mm -hmm. Then never mind what is going to happen in the other room uh -huh. subsequently. <laughs> now, if the man manages to step down off his high horse, <laughs> right. help with one or two, if the baby is going to wake up four times, please handle three. Yeah. Wait. Or even two, seven. <laughs> She's Wait, not done. Land. <laughs> handle three. Because you know what? When you head off to the office, madam will be home, yeah. cooking and cleaning and changing other diapers, cleaning mm -hmm. the house, mm -hmm. tidying up, cooking every market yeah, god knows so, what yeah. especially if she doesn't have help so while mm -hmm. you're working in the office which essentially until sitting at the desk yeah. she is running up and down dusting sweeping cooking, and everything going to the market everything. Looking, yeah. and all this and you are not superwoman you're a human being oh, yeah. you're flesh and blood mm. you get tired beautiful so divine. if nigerian men could form the habit of let me help out with just forty percent yeah. of the chores, and you know what is going Let me take my plate to the you know kitchen what is when I'm more done. Frustrating, eh? <laughs> is the men who will institute one rule that you will not have a maid. Mm. I don't because they are ready like this. Papers, so. That maids do juju and which mm. 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 I don't mind though. <laughs> you will help me with washing. Exactly. You will go to market. Me, I will cook and clean house. Are we agreed? Mm. No. So what do I do? <laughs> Good so you, you know, on, on some level, Nigerian mm -hmm. men still think that a wife is just one step Not above. Not Nigerian men. Some a men. A large do. number of Nigerian men a still think. Some men. A, na a large no, number of Nigerian men, men still divan, think. No, some men. <laughs> let's some agree men. with you that a wife is just <laughs> a, a housemaid with benefits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some also say that you, you're supposed to cook, clean, sweep, go to the market, go to work, come back, Super look at the kids. Do this and, and, and not get tired. I see on the other the, 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 the yeah. the room, right? Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. You don't get tired. If you do get tired, okay, mistress comes into the picture. Or maybe we can have five. See, there you go. Why do you think it's so? Society had made it so. And I said earlier, and I said, uh, just to corroborate your story. And we need now, to evolve from that. That we need to begin to educate. I have, I have a nine-year-old son and a, a ten-year-old daughter, uh, who is going to be 11 by December. They all do home shows. My boy cooks, my girl cooks. Why? Great. If she's working, doing anything in the kitchen, he must be there to assist her. If I can't groom him now, when am I going to groom him? Good. 
parents need to begin to see this thing as a responsibility that needs to be inculcated in the lives of our kids so they yeah. can go with it. Yeah. Society has told us, we saw it, our mothers are the ones doing all of the works, mm -hmm. and still come back at night, the man whines in the night like a cat, and she still gives him what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, it shouldn't be so. Like a cat. Yeah, it shouldn't be so. It is seen that the woman is that powerful being that can be multitask and all of yeah. that. But You're we saying live in we, an age we and act time like we can do it all? Where, yeah, we live in an age and time where the woman does not necessarily sit at home doing nothing anymore. Right? Uh, she goes yeah. out there doing yeah. what she's doing. Her brain works every now and then. She needs to relax. She needs to rest. So the man needs to also show help. If you want to have it good, extend the hand of fellowship. You. That's what I'm saying. If you want to have it good, see... Please the, tell them. The tell moment, them. The moment that them. you're going to have that whining moment mm -hmm. comes in, <laughs> if you don't do the right things first from the early not moments, if you don't start your romance from the beginning, ask her what you need, how you can help. Even when you're not prepared to help, say, so that, is there anything I can I help can you do. with? And half the time we're going to say, no, don't no, worry. No, don't, don't worry. No, don't worry. <laughs> because you don't want to be seen like you're not the, capable yeah, of yeah. doing yeah. it. The fact that you, you know, show you. I also want the women to begin to learn to communicate effectively. Try to let your spouse to know where you need them to help. Say it in nicer ways, you know, mm -hmm. so that you do know, can you, if you don't mind. Because sometimes I can ask <laughs> you to leave my room, and it looks like I just ask you to just leave gently. And I can ask you to leave, I'm insulting you. <laughs> uh, some, some women, uh, they easily, they easily domesticate the man. Mm. You can't domesticate your husband. No. Mm. Allow him to domesticate himself for you. <laughs> because once you do that, he will revolt. So Yes, we will. Okay, okay so like give us some chores. Give us a practical example. No, give us a practical example. Okay, okay. Honey, yeah, 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 honey, tell us, what, 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 what do you want to hear? It's simple. You know, sometimes um, my wife could just sit down and like, uh, we're just talking like, you know, she's so tired and uh, she had this to do. She's barely telling me <laughs> where she needs help. help. <laughs> so I just pull out my antenna of wisdom. So, okay, I, I think you need to rest. Don't force yourself to do what you cannot do now. Mm -hmm. What I've done, I'm also avoiding some of those things you want me to do. <laughs> <laughs> that was what uh, I was doing. Okay. <laughs> then what I now do is to look for a way to do what I can do. Uh -huh. Then other times I just wake up and do what I can do. But once I am domesticated, then of course I will revolt. <laughs> Don't expect that this is what I'm supposed to do. Except both of us are that we sat down and agreed that this yeah. is our responsibility. Okay. Then that is okay mm -hmm. because we have agreed mutual agreement. We must respect it. Right. But that isn't done, and you expect that oh you okay this guy should be doing this and you you have already allocated my shorts. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's so it's like shaving done. my head. It's not a Nigerian absence. thing. Yes. It's not a Nigerian thing in quote, but you see we need to society need to begin to change, change from things, that yeah. Nigerian thing. Society evolves. Yes. Yeah. Right. I, I agree. Why can't we live in it now? You do a nine to five job. I do maybe. A, uh, a nine to six or eight job, and I expect you to come back and be everything is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why can't you plan it? Exactly. Why can't you do the, the do the cooking when we're supposed to do, and put these things in the freezer and get things done? Mm, Why can't Kevin, you look for help? What needs to be? You're one of the. That's is it. Yeah, like, yes, well, well, I really on behalf of twenty percent of Nigerian men, men want Self. the I'm food from you, the branch I'm telling to you. the plate. So this no, freezer that, 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 top. No, I'm telling you that they're not going to eat food that stayed overnight. Thank you. Yes. And what's going through my mind is, do you know what you're eating in that restaurant? There you, go. you know, some From men believe that the that's, that's because what most they were tropically being so mm -hmm. biased, they wanted the woman to be, in quotes, the glorified maid. Right. So they, they see her, she's just a tool, she's, a, she, she's the, his property. Mm -hmm. it, well, look, why don't you stop taking bride price? Mm. That could help. True. Because, see, the man goes and pays the bride and his, and his, his feels, property. Yes, that's, that's malicious because we need to do some kind of research to prove that women who the people did not collect bride price are being treated better. Yeah. No, they are not. They are not. There's nothing they are not. That I that's only just said that. In, they are not. In my own tribe, they don't, the family doesn't even collect it. They give it back to the bride and groom. When you know, they say they, open it, use it to open my the bank account. Start your home. Children. Yes, exactly. They, you know, that yeah. doesn't really work, but I'm only saying that we can change some of these stereotypes. Things, yeah. You know, because, see, mm -hmm. I, I see things, I grew up wanting never to get married. Yeah. Really? I said I was, yeah, I said I wasn't going to get married. I wasn't going to have any issues because... Coming from where I was coming from, the background I was coming from was a polygamous background. Okay. And I didn't like what I saw. Mm -hmm. I said I wasn't going to get married. But getting to church and all of that, my psychologist changed. And I thought, oh, it's the best thing that can happen to you. Why don't I think right. that I can have the best of marriage? And you got married and like a year after, like, really? Is that <laughs> what I got into? I need to get out of this thing. But no, you have to walk it. Well, yeah. And how do you do that? Make you can only work. do that by effective communication. When it comes to, you know, shows, when it comes to romance, when it comes to finances, 
there has to be room for effective communication. What is the vision of your family in mm. terms of your romance? Mm. How do you want to spend the best of your time together? If that is not communicated, because sometimes we think we are soothsayers or psychic beings. <laughs> the woman needs help. Maybe at that particular time, her emotional state has been so down, she needs a good massage. Maybe. But mm -hmm. she wants to act like she's hard. She, she can walk. Force feed her. You know, we do that with our babies. When the babies don't want to eat the kind of food we want to give to them, we force feed them. Sometimes women need to be force fed. Mm. <laughs> because when you do it right, they're happy for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And thank you for it. So why can't you do the same? Yeah. Men need to begin to understand. Let's give room for men to be well groomed. Okay. So we can have a better society because when you have a well-groomed man, be sure you're going to raise good kids. Right. Yeah. Going back to the third party issue, what about um, these family units where your friend, for instance, your best friend comes in all the time, you tell him everything, you don't mm -hmm. talk to your wife as much as you talk to your best friend. That also affects the marriage. It yeah, affects course. the relationships in the marriage. So it could be his best friend, it could be my best friend, but it's affecting the marriage. That happens a lot. Yeah, but even apart from best friends, you know, when, when we first uh, mooted this uh, bit about third parties, I said there's an interesting story. Yeah. I want to, the, you know, uh, when you go for marriage classes and things like that, you're seriously discouraged from so confiding in third parties. Very much so, yes. Um, as a human being, I've come to find that mm -hmm. that's one of the most difficult, difficult pieces of advice to keep. Hmm. You will need to talk to somebody, somebody. sometimes. That's not yeah. your spouse? That Devan? is not, not your, your spouse. spouse. Really? Yes. Especially yes. when it is your spouse that has gotten on your wrong side. Exactly. You're not going to go to him and be like, yeah, sweetheart, so <laughs> this is what guess you what you me. did to me today? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. You, it, it, that your cousin that has been your friend from childhood, right. who understands you, who knows you, who will be able to say, eh. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. But Your actually best you friend. Wrong. So the counselors mm -hmm. are getting it wrong. Those are the They're not to getting us. it wrong, but I don't know if they practice what they preach themselves. <laughs> because as a human <laughs> being, I found it very difficult. The thing is to be able to pick wisely who exactly. you're talking to. Yes. It well, matters true. a lot. Yes. yes. Now, I said I was going to share this story. We, you know, we, we started talking about the bit about living with in-laws, then we didn't quite go there. And that, that's also part of the third party thing. Yes. Now, there's this situation where this woman, uh, her husband was an orphan. She had lost her dad. So when, when they got married, uh, her mother came to live with them. Her mother was a house um, Fulani Muslim okay. in a Christian home, mm. kind of. So, you know, sometimes the, well, on those moments when you, there's so much friction between the man and the wife, the lady would go to her mother and, you know, like, I don't get it with this man. He has done this and this and this and this. I'm fed up. I'm, I've had it up to here. I'm leaving. I can't continue with it. And the mother would calm her down. Oh, is that what happened? Yes, you need to talk to him. I can't handle this anymore. And the mother would be like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. As soon as he comes back from work, I'll make sure I do something. Don't, you just take it off your mind. Do whatever it is you need to do. As soon as he comes back and he has his meal, I'll, you know, approach him. I'll talk to him about this thing. And that's exactly what would happen, you know, he'd come back from work, he'd get served his meal and everything. Then his mother-in-law would come crouching. You know, these, are, these house are women, these old women, they're very <laughs> megidani. You know, uh, yeah. she will come <laughs> bowing and trembling, you know, and she will come and crouch at his foot. And be like, my daughter told me this thing, oh, she said you have a woman outside. Yeah, I don't know where she got this kind of character. <laughs> I never used to challenge my husband <laughs> when I was married to him. Wow. Forgive her. She doesn't know what she's saying. Wow. Yeah. And her daughter would be like, that is not what. <laughs> <laughs> you are validating him for God. That was not the conversation yeah, we had. had. I said, yes. talk to him. I didn't say go and. <laughs> what? But you know, in some reverse psychology kind mm. of way, this woman was keeping that marriage yeah, together. together. I, I kind of get what she did and why yes, she did it. Yes, it was yes. a reverse psychology kind of thing. She was making him understand that, look, I will never be that person who will tell my daughter to pack up and leave the house. Hmm. So That's you what do what you need to do. And that marriage lasted 40-something years with the woman threatening to leave at least once every year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, until, until she died and then he died later on. But oh, wow. This was a mother-in-law who was invested in keeping that marriage, marriage going together. Yeah, and whatever yeah. happened, she would find a way to blame her daughter. Especially if the man was so around. So the marriage was not going to break on her watch, mm. more or less. So if he, if he wasn't wow. around, you know men are like that. 
can I do? Your father was like this. And <laughs> but the minute he called, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't as know a, what kind of daughter I gave birth to. I don't exactly. know which school she went to. It wasn't me that I gave her this kind of training. Oh. Hmm. Please forgive her. She can never challenge you. It's your house. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why some of these marriages and lasted so much yeah, longer you know, than what and, we're and seeing now. And he'll be now. feeling really cool yeah. about the whole thing, like his mother-in-law is on his side. Oh, it's exactly. okay. I never Psychology. take it to happen. She oh, does wow. things like that. Oh, right. For that, he's going to do everything possible to make sure that the mother-in-law is not offended. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know? so, and that's by treating the wife right. Yeah. It, it was weird, but it worked. Yeah. You know, the marriage lasted. Nobody went anywhere. Mm -hmm. The kids are all well balanced and everything. Well, and we're yeah. running out of time, but yeah. I would like Kevin, who is like the only man here, to mm -hmm. just give the guys out there, the guys that watch com conversations, <laughs> to give them a bit of advice on, you know, anything we've talked about today. Well, first, you know, we talked about um, uh, how to manage your in-laws. Yes. Your in-laws. Um, understanding that your in-laws are part of your family will help you to have a sustainable, loving family. We can't run away from this. Yeah, that, yeah I agree that some, some persons could be... Um, what they call um, from hell, some mothers in law, yeah, it could be very overbearing because of probably some insecurities that they've had even in their marriages and they brought that to play. Mm -hmm. It is in the place of the wife to understand that this is my uh, husband's mother, look for a way to treat her nice. And when you talk about third parties, these are people that I call them medicine interlopers, they come in every now and then, sometimes we'll bring them in. There's the only best person you can confide in is your spouse. Hmm. Frankly, until both of you becomes naked and unashamed, you can't talk to one another, you can't confide in one another. So I think the best approach to look at it is to be sure that you can go naked. Now, I agree that because of our backgrounds, different backgrounds, some persons don't know how to manage secrets, yes, in quote. information. Yes. And or maybe the least, the least quarrel, what you confided in, it brings it out to oh, the open, oh. and so next time you're withdrawn. Yeah. Mm. Keep building, keep conversing, keep communicating. Mm. As you keep doing that, over time, the person will improve yeah. because some of us are talkative and some are quite, quite mm -hmm. you know, nothing. So I think men can get the best of marriages if you are willing to be sure you're ready to learn and the rest will be history. And I think it will be fantastic for all of us. Okay. Thank you, Kevin, for that comment. Our social media handles are open and available. Like you know, we are reading every single message. They're available on the screen and we would love to hear from you. What are your thoughts about living with in-laws or children as third parties even in a marriage. My name is Nika. Thank you so much for joining us. And with me, Chinwe. Bye-bye. Kevin Fifes. Have a blessed day. Deva Mom, stay blessed. <laughs> See you again soon here in the Conversation Room, right here on NTA. NTA language. Jama maskala la barang NTA hausa barka muda warhaka. Nini? Eko kala hello day ni njia wai sikuwe day. Ibo murum kachano. Broadcasted in the language you understand better. Our programs. I should know how to lie in money. Get to lie in money. What to lie in money? Oh yeah. Transmitting on the Star Times platform. 24 hours. The only channel that speaks your language. NTA, you can't beat the rich. <laughs> Hello, 
glad to have you join me on another exciting edition of the program Visual Impressions. I am Omar Umar Mohammed. Now, every week we try to bring to you some of the best work of art we can ever lay our eyes on by various artists in the country and also internationally. Today we will take a trip to Thoughts Pyramid here in Abuja where some amazing artists are going to exhibit their work of art. And the good thing about this thing is you're going to see different kinds of artwork from oil on canvas to pencil work to charcoal to watercolor and then the list just goes on and on and on. Now why don't you come and take a look and see what visual impression actually captured on camera. Thought Pyramid Art Gallery is known to always play host to visual artists and their creativity. We paid a visit to the gallery recently and we came across some magnificent art piece. The works there were mostly collections of some of Nigeria's finest painters. Going around the gallery, we ran into a 1988 classic painting of Professor Bruce Onobarpaya, one of Nigeria's greatest artists. The artwork, which has its usual style of multiple abstract African figures, was a sight to behold. Bruce is a printmaker, painter and sculptor, and all of these elements were merged in his artwork, which is predominantly bronze and black in color. We never seem to have enough of Lagos City. Whichever angle the city is painted from, it always tells a magnificent story. All of these artworks are collected from artists around the country and globally. Some of these artworks can't really be comprehended unless the artist interprets the work, but nevertheless, one can still appreciate the use of colors and how the figures are well balanced. This child art-like painting caught my eye. It's of Ben Osage a painter who is often described as a poetic paint artist in the art world. He paints directly from memory and most of his works are socio-politically motivated.
This artwork, which was painstakingly done with tiny beads, is an original piece of David Bale, done in 1993 using different colors of miniature beads that are arranged on a rectangular surface to create the animal kingdom, which he titled Safari. A 1989 painting titled Village Life Under Cocoa Tree, painted by Twin 77, just made the ambience feel more mystic. The combination of mythology and culture, which plays a major role in his art piece, creates a fantastic universe for humans, animals, plants, and Yoruba gods. A motif art piece by Jim O'Brien was also a delight to see. A collection of tiny beads were used to create faces on a large board. This is Jim O'Brien style. Standing at two feet tall was this amazing piece, which is an exclusive collection of cutlery. The cutlery was arranged carefully and craftily to form the falcon. The handle of the spoon formed the feathers. While the body was made from the oval end of the spoon. The best thing about this place is everything around here is art. From the benches, which had rusty metals on its handle,
You will not believe it, but this lovely piece of art was used to adorn the security post. Even the little ones know how to appreciate art, although this child is having a challenge on deciding which art piece he will take home along with him. Hope you enjoyed all those artworks. Hey, why don't you just grab a sheet of paper and a pencil and just sketch whatever comes to your mind. Always have it on your mind that anything you scribble on paper could actually come out really nice. The most important thing is for you to give it a very, very good finishing by framing it and then you have your very own masterpiece. Now let's quickly take a break, but before then, why don't you take this question along with you and then crack it up. What dance is highly characterized by the sounds of shoe. A, water dance. B, tap dance. And C, ball hole dance. My name is Juan Pablo. We are watching Visual Impression on MTA. Yeah.